right. So we are going to be learning some shortcuts today. First, let's talk a little bit about what we talked about last class and a further application of it. So last class, we talked about how we can use an operation or a series of operations to assign a value to a variable. So we can do some math to figure out a value and then assign that value to a variable. And we can actually use a variable's value to update that same variable. So let's look here. I have int number equals zero, number equals number plus 10, system.out.println number. So anytime that we do an assignment, we need to fully evaluate the right side of the equals before we can save the value into the variable. We need to completely solve the value over here, get a, an actual value, and then we can assign it. So here we've got our number, we've got our box with number, our named number, it's storing the number zero. What I want to do is I want to say number plus 10. So currently number equals zero. So I'm getting zero plus 10. Easy, that's just 10. Now that I have a specific value, I can assign that value to my variable number, and it's going to overwrite the zero that was there initially. So now number is going to store 10. So now when I print line my number, it's going to equal 10. Does that process make sense? How I can overwrite a value with, its, with a calculation that includes that number or that variable? So very often when we are doing code, it is useful to increase an integer value by one. We will often need to keep track of how many times a program has happened or a program has done something. We need to increase a value by one over and over and over again. So we can do that by saying counter, if I have a variable named counter equals counter plus one. Now that's pretty easy. But programmers, on the whole, tend to be a fairly lazy bunch. Um, they will either find or make a simple solution to a problem. So here, I have to type out that variable name two times, which A, is a lot of work, and B, is potentially error prone. If I accidentally spell one of them wrong, who knows what could go wrong. So, in Java, there is a handy feature to increase a variable or an integer variable by one, and it is the plus plus operator. This, when used in conjunction with an integer variable, will increase the value held by that integer variable by one. So the shorthand or the word for that operator is increment. That is the increment operator. And to increment uh, means to increase by a fixed value. So when we use that plus plus operator, we are incrementing the value of our variable by one. The opposite of the increment operator, the plus plus operator is the minus minus operator. And it does the exact opposite thing. Um, a job. The name for that is decrement. It decreases by a fixed amount. And just like plus plus increases by one, minus minus will decrease by one. No? So if I declare my integer x as equaling zero, and then I increment it, x is going to equal one. And then if I decrement it, x is going to equal zero again. So these are super helpful shorthand for if I want to add or subtract one from a value. Now it is possible to add or subtract more than one, and I'll talk about that in just a little bit. But first let's talk about white space in Java. Um, so white space is any blank space in your code, usually added by the space character uh, by pressing the tab key or just blank lines on in your code. Java does not care about white space. 
some languages like Python do care about white space, uh, especially for figuring out uh, tab levels and stuff. Java does not care at all about white space. So indentation does not change how your code runs. And you can have as many spaces in between operators and operands, the thing doing the operation and the thing being operated on, as you want. So you can say x plus plus with no space in between the x and the plus plus. You could also say x and then a bunch of spaces plus plus. So if you like how this looks better than how this would look with no space, both are equally valid. Java does not care about spaces like that. So those, these two lines here are gonna operate the exact same as one another. And you can add spaces just about anywhere you like. For example, this line of code will run system, a bunch of spaces, dot, a bunch of spaces, out, a bunch of spaces, etc. There's a whole bunch of spaces on this line of code, and that makes it kind of hard to read. So uh, keep in mind that even though this is allowed, I would certainly discourage you from writing code that looks like this because it makes my job way harder. If you'd like me to be uh, as happy grading your code as possible, I would appreciate if you make your code as easy to read as possible. So uh, just be aware that Java pretty much doesn't care about spaces. You can't break up a word. So if I said S-Y space S-T-E-M, Java will not understand that I'm trying to use the system uh, class, but anywhere that anywhere else, you can totally just in, insert spaces and it will not affect the code at all. All right, back to shortcuts. So each of the math and meta mathematical operators we learned about last class can be used in combination with an equal sign to make a compound assignment operator. So these will create a shortcut that let us avoid retyping variable names, just like plus plus and minus minus did. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place the mathematical operator that we wanna do in front of the equal sign when we're doing an assignment. And then the value on the right side of the assignment will be operated on with that operator and the other value will be the current value stored in the variable on the left. And then the result of that operation will overwrite the variable's value. That's a lot of words. So let's look at an example. So let's say, oh, okay. Let's say I have my int num1 equals zero. So I have my box num1, it equals zero. If I say num1 plus equals four, I'm going to say, okay, what's my current value in num1? It's zero. Um, this, this line, I'm, I'm adding four to the value in num1. So I have zero. Now I want to do whatever the current value of num1 is, which is zero plus four. Mr. Mac? Yes. Is it num1 plus plus or no? Oh, if it's plus equals, then what is that? What's the difference between plus plus and plus equals? Plus plus will only ever add one. Plus uh, okay. equals lets us add whatever number we want. Okay. Yeah, good question. So here, my current value in num1 is zero. Uh, so zero plus four is just four. I have a value now. I will overwrite the value in num1 with that value. Next, we have num1 minus equals two. So we're going to subtract two from the value held in num1 and then overwrite num1 with that new value. So I, I'm not gonna repeat that process with the popping it out every time. So what is four minus two? Two. It's two. So num1 will now equal two. Now we're going to do asterisk equals or multiply equals. So we're gonna multiply the value in num1 by six. Two times six is 12. Then we're going to 
divide equals. We're going to divide by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And num1 mod equals 2. We're going to mod our number or our num1 value by 2. So 4 mod 2 is 0. Hey, look, we got a circle. Does how we use this shorthand make sense? Yeah? All right. Well, today we have a very short and sweet lesson.